Right, we are off. Oh my goodness, look at you two. There's thousands of fleas on this poor dog. I'm breaking my heart, mate. Right now, there are dogs that need help. You can't stay like that. She's scratching all the time. And there are heroes that are dedicated to saving them. That dog cannot stay in the house. He's certainly a little fighter, this one. Transforming their lives. Let's get the clippers off, please. Without the surgery, she may not make it through this year. It really is going to be a lifesaver for her. Finding them forever homes. Sit. Ooh. So you get the dog you need. So. Yep, we needed him. The precious boy. And giving our four-legged best friends a second chance makes it all worthwhile. And to see them like this is just amazing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they are the dog rescuers. I love my dog. <laughs>
As JD is so agitated and uncomfortable, Anthony clears the room for his rescue. All right, buddy. It's all right. It's all right, buddy. I know. But JD's nerves and the tightness of the chain could make it a tricky one. Hello. It's OK. It's OK. We go for walkies. All right, buddy. What you got here? What you got here, eh? What have you done here? Good lad. Good boy. Let me see if I can work out how to get you off. It's good lad. Good lad. It's OK. It's OK. Very tight. Very tight. It's OK. It's OK. OK. Oh, you're keen to get out. Let's go and get some fresh air. Good boy. Good lad. Come on, then. JD's obviously relieved to have his freedom. Good boy. Oh. Quite literally, in this case. Well, that dog needed a wee. Desperate to go to the toilet. You know, wee in there for about 20, 30 seconds. It's not standard in a strong, strong smell of urine. Um, just look at the dog's eyes. They're red. Bloodshot eyes in dogs have many causes, from a mild allergy to something as serious as glaucoma, which can cause blindness. So JD needs to see a vet. Come on, we're going to go to the vet, sir. Come on, then. You need to jump in for me? Good boy. Good boy. He's keen to go. Good dog. It's OK. With JD safe in the van, Anthony has more time to note the conditions he was left in. Entanglement risk is just so high. Look at that. It's just, that's, that's not a lot of give, is it? I'm going to just measure that. 18 inches. The dog gets a longer lead than that when it goes for a walk. So JD's been forced to go to the toilet in the spot he was confined to. Oh, that's disgusting. This blanket is soaked. <coughs> I'm just going to take it away, because I just need to see what's going on underneath. Oh. <laughs> this is so wrong. To have to be forced to lie in that. Due to these horrible conditions... Cheers. The police have seized JD and passed him over to Anthony. Let's hope the poor lad's captivity hasn't caused him any long-term problems. Inspector Anthony Pulfer has rescued 18-month-old Staffy, JD. Hello, buddy. He'd been left tied by a short chain to a radiator for what could have been four days. He's less stressed now. It's nice to see. The poor lad had no choice but to lie in his own urine and faeces. Good lad. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Veely now. Anthony's brought him to see vet Kate Arrowsmith. This is JD. All right, well, he's, a, he's a very boisterous dog, bless him. Um, the main concerns with this was that he was tied to a radiator. Right, well, should we get him up on the table? Uh, Good boy. Come on in. Good lad. Good lad. It's OK. It's OK. Time for Kate to give him the once over. Okay. Come on, I need to listen to, listen to your chest. Good boy. Nice strong heart, that's great. The eyes are probably red through stress. Yeah. They, they don't look damaged at all. And they're not discharging. So I think that that will calm yeah. down a little bit as well once he starts to calm down a bit. I think, yeah, I think it's the stress of... His blood pressure's come up. Yeah. He's done it to him. Okay. I'm not worried about that. But what concerns me the most is that the tethering, and it could come to a lot of harm, couldn't he, because of that? Well, it's just, it's just straight up cruel. I don't see any reason why a nice-natured dog like this would be tied up like that. I think it's appalling. He could easily have choked himself if it had gone on much longer. So it looks as if JD has survived his ordeal relatively unscathed. Very, very unpleasant for the poor boy. And I think we're quite lucky that he's come away with a nice temperament, having been treated like that. He's not really stopped wagging his tail, he's not stopped looking around. And I think it's a good job done. Well done, Anthony. <laughs> 
I can't see he's going to be hard to rehome. Before he can go to an animal centre, JD needs to be vaccinated. There we go. And once there, his health will be monitored. All right, mate. We'll see you soon. We'll see you in kennels. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Kate. You're very welcome, And uh, we'll pop him off to the kennels. Good. And with JD safely at kennels, Anthony can rest easy knowing that now he'll be well looked after. Good boy. Good lad. Taking JD off that radiator out into the fresh air, it really is a buzz. That's a bit better, isn't it? You know, it makes you realise why you do your job. Good boy. We'll catch up with JD later. He's a good lad. Well done. In Yorkshire, Inspector Kira Benham is following up on a call about some dogs being kept outside, one of which has a worrying skin condition. My concern is that it's got a form of mange which, if left untreated, can be quite painful. I left a notice for the owner to take the dog to the vet. So we're just trying to go and see if we can follow that up. If she hasn't done that, then we may be looking to take the dog from her. I'm really concerned about this dog not receiving veterinary treatment. Right. As she approaches the house to meet up with a colleague, she recognises the owner's vehicle. Oh, she's just pulled up in the van. Fabulous. But the van abruptly drives away. Oh, she's going now. That's definitely her. It's quite clear she doesn't want to uh, talk to us. Kira and colleague Inspector Claire Mitchell need to find a way to check on the dogs. Can we come through and have a look out the back? Yeah. Oh, go on. Go on. <laughs> ah, go on, then. Tell love. Come on, babies. In the backyard, some little Jack Russells are living in purpose-built kennels. But Kira is on the lookout for the one with a severe skin condition. Last time it was in... I think it was in the third one down. There was two of them in there. It was in with that one. Well, how many have you got in total? There's three is there at the moment, there. Oh, ah! That's it. That's it there. That's the one. Oh, love. Got a sore eye as well. The eyes are really infected. I mean, you can see from a distance, the skin is obviously red and there's some fur loss going on. And the eyes, around the eyes, it looks quite bad as well. I'm not happy. Unless I know that dog has had some form of veterinary attention uh, since I last came, um, I'm not going to be happy to leave that dog in situ today. Kira can't remove the dog without the owner's permission. She needs to get her to agree to sign it over. Hello, my love, it's Kira from the RSPCA. I, I, do you know about the dog that I'm concerned about? Yeah, what, has, has it been to a vet? The owner says she's taken vet advice and has already treated her dog, called Ruby, for mange. If you're saying she's, she's had treatment a few months ago, you should be seeing signs of improvement. Well, I'm not prepared to leave this dog. I'm sorry, but this dog looked like that last week. And that dog needs to see a vet ASAP. If you're not prepared to meet me here, then I'll just have to get the police down to deal with it. And that's going to cause more fuss, isn't it? And I don't really want to do that. The owner finally agrees to return home. OK, see you soon. Bye-bye. And let Kira take Ruby to a vet. <sighs> right. She's willing to sign over that dog and another dog, apparently, to the RSPCA today, so we'll, we'll get that dealt with uh, and then we'll, we'll see what the vet says from there. The owner has requested not to be filmed. I'm not here to cause you upset or any distress. We just need to get that dog sorted. But she's as good as her word and signs over two of her Jack Russells. Righty-ho, I better get these guys off, all right? All right, puppy dogs. The lady is suffering with some problems. She's got a lot going on. She's also given me another male, um, which apparently she's struggling to cope with. So I've got that one signed over too. 
The boy is three-year-old Boss, but it's nine-month-old Ruby that Kira's worried about. Apparently, this mange has been ongoing ever since she was a puppy, and the lady's struggled to get on top of it. She has had it to a bit, but the treatment that she's been doing just doesn't seem to have been working, and what's more, now the eyes have become quite badly infected. We just need to get her down to the vet as quick as possible. We'll see how Ruby gets on later. Rescued Spaniel Ted here has a rather special gift for finding things with his nose, so much so that the police have got a whiff of his talents and are willing to consider him for sniffer dog training. But will he have what it takes to go from rescue dog to police dog? Stick with us this series to find out. Very good. Like many of the dogs we see, life didn't start well for Spaniel Ted. He was one of two dogs rescued from a squalid bedsit, unloved and surrounded by his own mess. In July 2016, Supervisor Sue Dix and the team at RSPCA West Hatch in Somerset took him in. An inspector rang up and asked if we could take Ted and um, another Springer bitch that was with him in. They had a skin condition and the weight Ted was. But miraculously, Ted didn't let his past affect his outgoing personality. Seat. Ted loves everybody. He's very lively, very confident, just on the go all the time. But that's not all Sue saw in Energetic Ted. I started playing ball with him, and that's when you saw his full potential. Ted has a real talent for sniffing things out. Fetch. And Sue loves a dog with an acute sense of smell. Well done, he's a good lad. For over a decade, she's been working with the local police force, sniffing out dogs to join their ranks. We've rehomed to the police 13 dogs so far over the last sort of 10 to 12 years. So I was thinking this could possibly be uh, dog number 14. Sue thinks Ted's got an air of talent, but will the experts think his nose is strong enough? Today, experienced police dog trainer Lee Webb will be putting Ted through his paces. Hi, Teddy. To see if he can earn himself a place on the sniffer dog course. There are no guarantees with any dog. He, he's got potential, and we're going to work with that potential. But it's not just Ted that's learning the ropes. This will be the first time dog handler PC Sam Dutton has had to train a sniffer dog. I'm quite nervous. It's always when you meet a new dog, it's whether that dog is going to bond with you. There he is. Hello. Who's this, Ted? Hello. Today, really, is about me starting to build that relationship. You've got to have that bond, otherwise you haven't got a dog that will work for you. If today goes well, not only will Ted earn himself a place on the course, but he'll get a new home with Sam, too. Uh, he likes your own, that's a good sign. Police dogs never know what they might face. So Lee wants to see how Ted behaves in an unfamiliar environment. Ted's surrounded by objects and surfaces he wouldn't have encountered before. And if he's to impress Lee, he needs to get used to them quickly. All I want you to do to start with is just take a wander around with him, just see that he's confident and comfortable. A little bit freaked by the chair, so just bring him back to this. So, never seen a moving office chair before, so it's just getting him to understand that everything's OK. Good boy. That's it. Good, good boy. boy. Well, he looks confident. He's good on the floors. Yeah, We've got a slippery really. floor and, he, and yeah. he's good on it, so... Yeah, he's all right. Come on, Ted. So, come on, Ted. Come on, Teddy. Good boy. Good dog. Ted seems unfazed by his new surroundings. Good boy. So Lee wants to up the ante. What we're going to do now is going to start the, the process of searching and assess what he's like using his nose, OK? Yeah. And Lee will be using Ted's favourite toy to test that, a tennis ball. <laughs> this is it, Ted. Nose at the ready. Now, I'm going to show him when I come back, Sam, that I haven't got the ball anymore, OK? He's going to have to use his nose to find it, OK? Yeah. So, wait. 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 There are around 1,800 police dogs working in the UK 
sniffing out everything from drugs to explosives. Good. Good job. And they play a vital role in the fight against crime. So I like his search ethic already. He's all over it. In, you know, in yeah, 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 exactly. If Ted wants to join their ranks, he can't let the unfamiliar surroundings throw him off the scent. And if he can't find the ball, his training could be over before it's even begun. And clearly using his nose, and that's not his eyes, which is important. He's got it. Good boy! Good, good. 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 well done, good well boy. done. That was really good. So he can use his nose, you found out really quickly. So we're gonna do play that game again. Seems like this sprightly Springer is on the ball. He's got that already. Good boy! The sweet smell of success. Or a manky tennis ball. I couldn't be happier with him. I think they're going to be a good team. Good boy! Ted's passed the first test, earning himself a place on the course, and he's also got himself a new home. They couldn't have gone better. A cracking little dog, a confident little dog. He searches really well. He uses his nose as a starting point. It looks like I've got a fab dog. Before Ted's six-week course begins, he needs to settle in at home. We'll find out how he gets on later. Also coming up, we get to the bottom of Ruby's skin condition. That's good. Oh. Well done, you are so good. That's a good boy. And we meet boy. emaciated Rex, a true survivor. Do you know roughly how long you think he could have been starved for? I would say a good probably six to eight weeks. Back in Yorkshire, Inspector Kira Benham has rescued two Jack Russells, one of which has a painful looking case of mange. I wasn't prepared to leave that dog in that situation today. It was too bad. When a dog is clearly in a state where it needs veterinary attention, I'm not going to walk away from it. It's as simple as that. The dog with inflamed skin and eyes is nine-month-old Ruby. Come on then, sweet chip pie. And your robes. We're going to go get you sorted, aren't we? She's going to be examined by vet Jenny Dapps. Here we are. <laughs> this is Ruby. How old's Ruby? Nine Do you think? month, but she was born oh, in August young. last year. She's only a baby. OK. All right, darling. She's a bit scabby, isn't she? Yeah. The owner has stated that she's had a tour vet and that they diagnosed it as Demodex. The eyes have now got infected. She's not had vet treatment for those eyes, I don't think. All right, sweetheart, I know. There's a nasty conjunctivitis. So we'll get her some eye drops, and then, yeah, the Demodex, it'd probably be best just to confirm with a scrape. Demodex mange is caused by mites that live around the hair follicles. To see if Ruby has them, Jenny will need to scrape several layers of skin away. You are gorgeous. To be really brave. Be really brave for us now. That's a good girl. Well done, you are so good. What a good little girl. It looks painful but brave Ruby is bearing up very well. Oh, you are clever. As the mites can be difficult to spot, even under a microscope, Ruby needs to have more than one sample taken. Good girl. And sure enough... Found two on there. There are signs of the mites. There's a few mites there, um, not loads, so that would fit with what the owners, the previous owner has been saying about yeah. they're being perhaps treated, but not perhaps as effectively as we would like. Yes. So we'll um, get her going with some treatment. We'll get her started. Ruby's been prescribed medicated baths to soothe her skin and kill the mites. Let's pop you in there and get you some water. Tomorrow she'll be taken to the rescue centre, but for tonight she'll be staying at the practice. Cute, isn't she? With Ruby taken care of, Kira can turn her attention to the other dog she rescued, three-year-old Boss. Right, Boss, you're up. There. Is that better? 
Hey, shock horror, he says. There we go. Right, this is Boss. Boss. <laughs> Apparently, because he was bossy with the others. <laughs> He's three years old, entire male. Doesn't look too bad. Looks like he needs a good bath. <laughs> yeah, I think that's basically it. We're no, going to get you in a kettle. We'll get him in a bed. Yeah. Come on, then. Boss might whiff a bit. Come on, then, mister. But apart from a wash, he doesn't need any treatment. Just a cosy bed for the night. Oh, there's a good boy. They're here, they're safe. She started on treatment. We've got a nice bed for the night, food and water, and then they'll get a nice bath tomorrow. And get that horrible, stinky smell off you, won't we, kids? So, uh, really pleased with the outcome of today's job. We'll catch up on Ruby's recovery later. But before we do, we're back with Super Spaniel Ted. Good. He's proven he has what it takes to earn himself a place on the elite sniffer dog course. I couldn't be happier with him. I think they're going to be a good team. But how's he getting on with new partner PC Sam Dutton? Mm -hmm. Good boy. Mm, I know. Yes, yes, it's in a time. <laughs> like the new pad, Ted. Very swish. Sit. This. Yes. This is Ted's new home, so he has to live outside. Um, it's important that when he's not at work that he rests properly. It's also important that he's a little bit hardy because in the winter we might be working at three or four o'clock in the morning in places which are cold, wet and quite horrible. Oh, Ted, what have you signed up to? Cheer up, mate. Time for a treat. Ted in. Good boy. If Ted passes his training, he won't be Sam's only working dog. He'll be joining the ranks with our other police dog, Chico. And as well as Ted and Chico, Sam and her partner, Matt, have three pet dogs too. It's quite a challenge. It is like having five furry children. <laughs> it's chaos. <laughs> Today, they're all off to Salisbury Plain to give Ted a run around with his new brothers and sisters. <laughs> yes. Meet Spaniels Coda and Isla, and the old chap is Quinn, the lurcher. Come on. Ted has settled in really, really well. And only days in, he's already a part of the family. The main concern was how Ted and Chico were going to get on, but they run around quite happily together. Seems like Ted's making friends for life. But it's the bond between him and Sam that will get him through his training. Working dogs have to be your best friend. Come on, Ted, come! Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. We need to have that relationship to work. So if there's no bonds, there's no working relationship. Building that bond is starting right at feeding, grooming, and going out for a walk. It's all these tiny little things just going from spending time together. I think it's nice that, that a dog that is in rescue is given the opportunity. We're giving a dog a, a, a new start. Now Ted is part of the family, the thought of failure is tougher to take. You meet Ted, you fall in love day one. Is Ted going to make it? It's exciting and scary. <laughs> Never gonna find me. Oh. All right. Hi, Sam. Hi. <laughs> um, so, he's picking it up then. <laughs> yeah, he has. He's found it. <laughs> he's living with you and he's on the course now. Yes, yeah. Teddy's moved in at home with me and we've just started out our course. Right. Are you, are you optimistic? Always optimistic. Good. <laughs> yeah, no, I am. Um, as I say, it's the early stages. There's always ups and downs on a course, but the bits that we've been through initially are going really, really well. He's settled in at home. He's starting to respond to me quite nicely. And what does he need? I mean, obviously, he needs to have a good nose. Yeah. To be a sniffer dog. We put them in some quite difficult situations right. where they may be searching for drugs, for firearms, for cash. Um, and so he's got to be able to trust me 
And it's all that that needs to develop in the early stages, but that's all coming along quite nicely. And what about the written paper? How's his handwriting coming on? Much better than Good. mine. Yeah. <laughs> and again, I'm relying on him. So you think he's going to get through? Do you think he's going to pass? I hope so. Qualify? Like any course, there's lots of ups and downs, but the early stages are looking quite promising. I shall certainly look forward to seeing how he gets on. Yeah, we will keep you all updated. Keep us informed. Come on, Ted. <laughs> Over in North London, Inspector Sam Durrant is working on a distressing case concerning a dog called Rex. He was taken straight to the Harmsworth Hospital by one of my colleagues. Just seeing him for the first time was shocking. Nothing can really prepare you for that. I had, had never seen a dog so emaciated. He couldn't stand, he couldn't lift his head. He was very much touch and go whether he would survive. Sam has come to the hospital to check on 18-month-old Rex, who's been under the care of vet Amy Limbert. A good boy. Good boy. Yeah. Oh, such a clever dog. Good boy. You? So how's he doing? It's a very slow process. As you can see, he's got such mm. severe muscle wasting. There's nothing here at all, um, is That there? he's so weak, he doesn't have much to support his weight. We just have to get him to the point where he's actually strong enough now to walk. Do you know roughly how long you think he could have been starved for? Um, I would say a good probably six to eight weeks. Yeah. Of not being fed of properly not being or fed. anything yeah. at all? Or... Yeah. He was borderline a euthanasia case when he came in. He was that badly emaciated. You know, I was really worried about the first yeah. 24, 48 hours or whether or not he'd actually make it. Ethically, as a vet, there, there was a big question over what I should do. But uh, I was talking to him and he started wagging his tail and we could see that he had some spirit and some fight, so we thought we'd give him the best chance. He's certainly a little fighter, this one. Oh, good boy, Rex. Um, and we're really starting to see his personality come out now. He's gorgeous, isn't he? He's absolutely gorgeous. You're oh, a little champion, boy. aren't you? Fighter Rex has gained a third of his body weight in a week, and he's showing some definite signs of improvement. In the last sort of two to three days, he's gone from being able to sort of right himself into sternal, so sitting up on his chest, um, to actually just being able to stand and support his own body weight. So he's quite keen to get up, but um, it's just that he doesn't have a lot of strength. So that's what we're working on at the moment. Doing. Hey, Rexy, shall we see how you're doing today, matey? Good dog. Good boy. Such a good boy. The question is, has Rex got the strength to stand up by himself today? What a trooper, hey? He's a good boy, Rex. You can see, he loves her. His little tail starts wagging. Oh, good boy. He's just a little bit wobbly. He's just unsteady, isn't he, yeah. really? How long before you think he might be able to walk on his own? With some physio, I'd say another week or two, he should be walking. I'm just so pleased with the progress he's made. But I think all of us, myself included, when, you know, when we saw him for the first time, we were just, just cried, really. I mean, it's just awful to see any animal like this, knowing that he's been left to suffer, really, for this long. It's just disgusting. The progress he's made is just fantastic. The team here are doing a really good job. Um, he's being fed every couple of hours. He's putting on a lot of weight. Everyone's fallen in love with him. I've fallen in love with him. I think so many people just want the best for him. And because they're having to invest so much care into him, they just grow really close to him really quickly. He's a real cheeky little character and it's lovely to see, really. So can Rex get those legs working and walk again? We'll check in on him later. Also coming up, is there a happy ending for JD, the staffy left tied to a radiator? Driver, go. And are you looking to adopt a dog? Well, stay tuned, we might have the perfect one for you. Oh. 
Hello. Earlier, Inspector Anthony Pulfer rescued Staffy JD from a potentially hazardous situation. Uh, these, oh. They'd been left home alone, chained up to a radiator. The dog's being removed, his needs aren't being met. This is so wrong. OK. Oh, you're keen to get out. Let's go and get some fresh air. Luckily, he survived his ordeal with no injuries, but a nasty case of stress, and his owner signed him over for rehoming. JD. After two months in kennels, JD has now found his forever home with aircraft maintenance engineer Matt Dovey. I went along, had a look at him, and uh, he seemed to, to fit the bill. Bit of a character. Some dogs are quite soppy, but JD's not. He's a bit of a, a, bit of a geezer. <laughs> it's a bit of a lad. <laughs> He's now been with Matt for three months, and his quirky personality is shining through. He likes to drag his blankets around the house. He likes to take his um, food bowl for a walk. Get your bowl, JD. He's a good boy. And then um, he'll hand it to you, and then he'll sit there patiently and wait for his food. He does help me out by getting the, uh, the post. So far, it's all remained in one piece. Good boy. Thank you very much. The little staffy that was left barking for days is now a beloved pet. I couldn't imagine life without JD. I think he's got a pretty good life. <laughs> he's off. What are you doing? Oi! JD's obviously not averse to the green stuff, so it might be time to grab that lead. We just come up to uh, the local playing field. Uh, JD likes to come around here. It's a nice big open space for him to run around in. It's, it just gives you an opportunity to stretch his legs. Good boy. Looks like this cheeky lad's got a happy and stress-free life at last. Good on you, JD. Down, boy. Now, is there a happy ending for Ruby, the Jack Russell with mange and conjunctivitis? Oh, love. It's been three months since Inspector Kira Benham rescued her. We just need to get her down to the vet as quick as possible and get her started on a course of treatment, make her feel more comfortable. Today, she's dropping by to see Ruby at her new forever home with owners Anne and Alex. Easy. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, Hi. Hi sweetie. <laughs> what are you doing? Ruby certainly seems thrilled to see Kira. And it looks like the feeling's mutual. <laughs> oh, how much better do you look? You're fab. Yes, you are. Look at your skin. Look at your eyes. You're so beautiful. <laughs> You're so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Ruby's as lively as a puppy. Now the mane she had practically all of her short life has almost cleared up. She has the treatment now. She was still on the medicated baths for right. a couple of weeks when we yeah. first brought her home. Yeah. But she's got the all clear from that now. Oh, so she does yeah. still have eye drops oh, four right. times a day as well. Oh, yeah, because you had really poorly eyes, didn't you? Mm. But look at you now. You're so gorgeous. Please, like you that. are. So what made you choose Ruby out of all the dogs, that, you know? We saw maybe three or four dogs. Yeah. And she was the first one that we both were like, oh, my God, oh, I love yeah. her. Oh like, God. we... Yeah. We, we, both, love yeah, we both just sort of looked at her and thought, oh, my God, like, mm. she's so sweet. It's just wonderful to see her in such a happy home. Mm -hmm. It does. It brings a tear to my eye, cos it's like... To see her so happy... It's just... It's, it's worth everything. You're a treasure. <laughs> and these people are very lovely people to set you on, <laughs> aren't they? They got their work cut out with you, but it's worth it, innit, Missy? <laughs> hey? She's a good one. You're a keeper, aren't you? <coughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's so happy. <laughs> See you later, baby girl. So Ruby's settled in well. It's the best possible outcome for Kira. The smile on my face says it all. The improvement that she's made over the last few months is phenomenal. Oh, it's just lovely. <laughs> I love my job. <laughs> A 
And what about Rex, the horribly emaciated dog rescued by Inspector Sam Durrant? The last time he saw him, he could barely stand up on his own. Rex! But now look at him. What's this? Those legs are back to full strength. What's this? <laughs> Good boy. To now see him growing into himself and filling out, it's just, yeah, it's fantastic, it's brilliant. Put the weight on, he's putting muscle tone back on. You can start to see a lot more of his personality now. He's like a completely different dog. It's amazing how dogs like Rex can bounce back. He just seems to be going from strength to strength each day and he's doing amazing. He's playful, he's cheeky. So yeah, he's just gonna make a perfect, perfect pet for someone. It's a wonderful transformation. We'll catch up with Rex later in the series. As you've seen in the programme, many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life, but that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them, and there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. This is Jemima. She's a three-year-old dog to Bordeaux. She's been at Southridge for just over two months now. Unfortunately, Jemima's been here for quite a while due to health problems, but now that she's fighting fit, hopefully we can get her in a new home soon. My favourite thing about Jemima is she's very cuddly and laid back, and she's got a lovely personality. She loves poodling around the garden, but her favourite place is the sofa where she's normally sleeping. She's a very laid back girl, but once you've got a ball, she loves having a game of ball. Driver, go. It's really funny because you just don't expect it because she's normally so laid back and then all of a sudden she springs into action and she turns into a puppy again. Jemima needs an adult home with no other animals. She needs help with her socialising with other dogs, which we have started. Whoever takes Jemima is going to be very lucky. Everyone loves Jemima. She really needs a nice, loving home now. So, if you're looking for a four-legged best friend in your life, remember to make your local rescue centre your first stop, where you'll find plenty of deserving candidates desperate to brighten up your home. Only a dog like Dexter here is a privilege, as well as a big responsibility. He's totally reliant on you for all his needs, for his food, his water, and his exercise and shelter, and lots of affection. But some people can't or won't commit to this, and that's when inspectors need to step in. Another one. He's had 52 now, I think I should stop. Coming up, how thin is that doggy in the window? Rookie Inspector Kate Parker comes to the rescue. I've seen your dog. The state of your dog is not on. Frustration for veteran inspector Sarah Gardner. Can Ruby's owners step up to the plate? Ruby, she should have finished her treatment by now. You've got to take that responsibility. Yeah. You, you've got to do it. Good girl. And Ellie, the dog de Bordeaux, is saved after shocking treatment from her owner. Hearing it scream and him chasing it, it's just awful. It just makes me feel sick and really angry. But first... I'm trying to work out where we're going. We will go this way, because I don't know what's up there. We're in the West Midlands with Inspector Kate Parker. She used to work for the police force before joining the charity two years ago. She's on her way to investigate an alleged abandonment. Hey, fella. Hey, hey, hey. First impression is that the dog's in the window. It is thin. You can see the spine sort of coming all along the top and onto his, onto his tail as well. Poor chap. 
as well as looking skinny, he's home alone. Dogs are social animals. They need company. So to see an animal that's left by themselves for long periods of time is heartbreaking. Just looking around the back, you can see into the kitchen from the garden. There's an empty bowl down, so I don't know whether there's been food or water recently for it, but looking at the state of it, probably not. So we'll see if we can find out who's looking after it and uh, let's see if we can get the dog out. Kate's managed to track down the owner of the dog called Max. Yeah, I'm just outside your house now, OK? And I've seen your dog. The state of your dog is, is, is not on, OK? It's far too thin. His bones are sticking out of his back. So this needs sorting today. The owner says she hasn't fed Max today because she's away on a course. I appreciate that it's quite difficult with your work and training course, but that dog cannot stay in the house. If I sort of feel that actually he needs to see a vet for, for an opinion on whether he's suffering, then we'll go from there. But at the minute, I need you to come here so I can have a proper look at him. The owner agrees to come back to the house. It sounds like she's in a bit of an awkward situation with work and with her home life and things like that, which I completely empathise with, I really do. But looking at the dog, it's clearly not having his needs met, really, which there's no excuse for that. So we'll see what she says um, and go from there. There's an hour's wait before Kate's finally able to get a good look at two-year-old Max. Hello, fella. Why is he so thin? His spine's sticking out and so are his hips. And that, to me, you know, in the law, really, his needs haven't been met in the basic sense that he's not been fed. Do you understand what I'm saying? The owner tells Kate that work commitments have meant she's had to leave Max alone for long periods of time and agrees to sign him over. Owning a dog is a massive responsibility. See you later. Come on, fella. I know. If you can't give it what it needs, don't get a dog. It's quite a simple thing. And this Whippet Cross looks like he could do with a good meal. So you can see the rib bones along here coming out and then the spine along coming along the back. But more sort of prominent are his two hip bones here, so you shouldn't be able to see the hip bones, which are sticking out. What we're going to do is we're going to pop it to a vet and get their opinion on him, really. You can pop it. I know. I know. Come on then, fella. I know, I know, I know. Oh, let me open the door. The state of him, you've seen his bones, it wouldn't be acceptable to a person, so it's not acceptable to an animal. The dog needed to come away today, um, and, you know, fortunately, the owner's signed him over, which is in, in his best interest, but, yeah, he needs to come out today. After a long, sad wait, Max is finally going to get the attention he deserves. In the West Midlands, Inspector Kate Parker has rescued underweight Whippet Cross Max. Hello, gorgeous. Oh, it's so exciting, isn't it? You good boy. And brought him to be checked over by vet Ella Barchak. All right, good boy. Come on in. Oh, he's a good boy. Hello. Oh, you're very friendly. Right, can we pop on the table? Yeah, yeah. All right. All right, so when did you yeah. find him? Uh, I found him uh, this afternoon. All oh, right. Um, so he's been with us for about an hour. OK, any problems so far? No, not at all. Dead friendly. Um, oh, yes, we like a food. Yeah, do. he's uh, searching for food quite a lot. Well, that's no surprise, considering how skinny he is. I know. A little bit of tartar on the teeth. Right. OK, have a little bit of lesion on the nose, but I think it's healing, so yeah. it doesn't need anything doing. He's definitely underweight. All of this white flakes, if you see now, this is because of malnutrition. The nasty dandruff could be a sign that he's not getting enough vitamins, minerals and fat from his food. And being so thin has also given Max another problem. So there's a tiny old wound on our called ulceration, mm. OK? Which Ooh. could be because there's a sticking bone there, because he's so skinny, it could be just a sore patch. Like a pressure sore type yeah, thing, exactly. so where they're on sort of harder yeah. floor. OK. To check there's no infection, Ella needs to examine his anal glands. So we're going to check his palm, all right? It's not painful, but it's not the most nice experience, OK? Well, it's all relative. So that's a chew for you. Oh, oh, you're eating fingers as well. That's OK. <laughs> a crunchy snack should come as a welcome distraction for Max. Now breathe in. OK, ready? Yep. 
He doesn't mind it, really. <laughs> Just food. <laughs> right, job done? OK. So there's no infection there. It looks more like a sore place because he's so skinny. To see just how underweight Max is, he's going to have to step on the scales. Yeah, it's all right. I'm excited, boy. Okay, so he's ten... ten and a half. So think... would you say, then, he's um, sort of a third, probably more than a third... To put on weight. ...under what he should yes, be, Yes, really. definitely. But, I mean, looking how he eats, I think he's going to gain this quite quickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely got an appetite, isn't he? During his examination, Ella has spotted that Max has another rather intimate issue. He's um, really sticking <laughs> out all the time. Um, he's sorry, he's... Willy. Penis. Right, OK. So I just need to just put it, try to put it back. It's a condition that can actually have serious consequences. Let's see what we can do here. Because he's not castrated when he's getting excited, not sexually excited, just like domination or stress, they can do that. Because you have blood vessels there who are like, swelling up, so they can put it back, um, and then the skin is kind of trapping the blood vessels. It can't, the blood can't come back, and it's just sticking out. In severe cases, the tissue of the penis can die, become infected, and lead to kidney failure. Not good. OK, it's back, all right? If that's going to keep popping out, OK, the treatment is going to be castration. He needs to be castrated anyway. He'll be castrated anyway because he's... He just needs to so. put on weight a little bit. But if you're going to be continuously doing this, if you notice he's drying off or anything, then gel mm. lubrication, put it back, if not, to the vets. Okay. So, one very personal problem solved for now. Max also needs a worming tablet, which goes down very well. And there's no tablet anymore! You need off your tablets. He's so hungry, he's eating worming tablets for the treat. Yeah. It's going to be fine. Yeah. Just find him a nice home. Oh, we will. For active people, I think that's going to be yeah. the case. <laughs> yeah, I know we will. Thank you. Brilliant. All right, bye. Thank you so much. Bye no bye. problem. Take care. I probably would say month and he's going to be back to normal. And he's lucky he's not mentally damaged. He is really nice, so he really have a chance to be at home. I wonder what's going on, don't you? But first stop for Max is the animal centre, where he'll be given a cosy bed as well as a proper meal. The vet has said that he was suffering, so he's been caused unnecessary suffering, um, and that he's far too thin, he's put on a lot of weight. Um, I know, I know. And it's purely from the basis that he's not been fed. He is the friendliest dog. Um, everybody in the vet has loved him, you know, the vet has loved him, he's been so friendly, um, and I don't think it'll take long at all to fly out of our animal centre. We'll catch up with lively little Max later. Well, that was an examination and a half for Max. Well, we've seen a lot of dogs that bounce back from their bad experiences. For some, the scars go more than skin deep, especially if it's as frightening and traumatic as what happened to the dog in our next story. In Lancashire, Inspector Helen Smith was involved in a distressing case that was caught on camera. We were sent a video of a male, what appeared to him chasing a dog around the back garden. You expect a bit of trust with the dog and an owner, but there's absolutely no trust there with that dog at all. The man's coming for it with a big piece of wood and the dog's petrified. The dog's absolutely nowhere to go because the garden's surrounded with a six-foot fence. It's just horrible. No matter what excuse you give to treat your dog like that, at the end of the day, the dog's terrified and it's mental torture. Even if he didn't make contact with the dog with the big piece of wood, hearing it scream and him chasing it, it's just awful. It just makes me feel sick and really angry. I think because it's on a video, you just feel so useless and helpless for that animal. You can't help it there and then. Whereas if I saw it happening in the street, I could pull over and stop it. Thankfully, Ellie, an 18-month-old dog de Bordeaux, was seized by the police and handed over to the charity. For the past few months, she's been looked after by animal care assistant Georgie Meek and the team at RSPCA Preston. And today, Helen's come to see how Ellie is doing. Good girl. Good girl, Ellie. Ready? Come on, in. Come on, Ellie. There we go. Well, she does look amazing. When I brought her in, she had all her ribs showing and she was absolutely petrified. And now you're a little bit more confident, aren't you? A little bit. 
You're a beautiful girl. When she first arrived, she was uh, very, very nervous, very wary of new people, didn't like strangers. And when meeting someone new, she'd slink right to the floor and approach really, really slowly. Her confidence has developed so much more. She'll get used to them in a matter of minutes rather than days now. Yeah. And... Come on, then. Come on. <laughs> Come on, sweetheart. Ellie's brutal treatment from her male owner has had understandable consequences. When I first brought her in, there was a man there as well, a member of staff, and she just was flat on her stomach, really interested in him but terrified of him, and then just wanted to stick by the girls, really. She still prefers the female members of staff. Yeah. Just doing a lot of introductions to male members of staff with a female present. As long as you've got treats in your pocket, she'll, yeah. she'll, <laughs> she'll fall for anyone given time. Although Ellie's making progress, she's still wary of new faces. Yeah, see, strangers. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come, Come on, on. sweetheart. What are you doing? Good girl. What are you doing? You're not a guard dog. Are you sending them off? Ellie will remain here until the case against her owner is resolved. He's been charged with causing her unnecessary suffering. And in the meantime, Georgie will work on building up her confidence to give her the best chance of being rehomed. Good girl. We'll be back with Ellie later. Just over 100 miles away, south of Nottingham, veteran inspector Sarah Gardner is going back to see a couple who were issued with a warning notice about their dogs. About three weeks ago, I took the two dogs to the vets, one of them relating to the treatment of its mange. The other one is a very old dog that has uh, mammary tumours that have spread and are untreatable. Initially, I gave them a week to get both of their dogs to the vets. Uh, this didn't happen, so I took the dogs to the vets for them. Hopefully, they've been able to maintain the treatment that they've been given and uh, the dogs are a lot more comfortable now. There is close to a million dogs in Britain that aren't registered with a vet. They're there for advice. Hi, Stephen, you all right? Just come to see how the dogs are doing. If your pet is overweight, if it is suffering from an allergy of some sort, you can ring them up. It, it's just vital that everybody registers their dog with a vet. Hey, Jade. Hello, darling. Ruby! Unfortunately, Staffy Cross Ruby and Black Lab Jade still haven't been registered with a vet. Hey, Jade. How are we doing? Yeah. This back tumour's changing again, isn't it? Yeah, getting bigger, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. <sighs> Remember what I said to... Oh, crikey. <laughs> put, her, put her down. She'll be all right. She'll be all right. Remember what I said to you about Jade, though? She'll suddenly go and yeah. she's got to be registered. And, you know, it, it, it... And with it being like that, I think she's coming into season again. Ruby! And, and that... She's all right. And that will stimulate the mammary cancer. Yeah. She's got to be registered. I can't keep leaving her here cos I'm worried that she's going to suffer. As well as getting their dogs registered with a vet, they were also told to give Ruby a medicated bath every five days for her mange. It is better than it was. But one of the four bottles is still unopened. This one's got one bottle left for the bath. She shouldn't have a bottle left. If you don't do the treatment as it's meant to be done, it's not necessarily going to have worked. Well, we are doing the treatment as subscribed and as mentioned, and we haven't gave up. The owners have been mistakenly bathing Ruby every seven days instead of every five. Ruby, she should have finished her treatment by now. You've got to take that responsibility. Yeah, yeah. You, you've got to do it. That duty of care also means looking out for the dog's diet. Dogs should have an appropriate diet to their breed to their size. You shouldn't be feeding it human food. 
No more Battenberg. And you definitely shouldn't be giving them sugary cakes. No, you're not getting no more Battenberg. No that, more, Ruby. That, well, that was your treat no, for the actual month. that's Mummy's now, not yours. The owners have had their chance to treat Ruby. It might be that she's still got mites. Taking her to be checked out by a vet is the only way to see if it's been enough. Yeah. Right. Ruby! I'll take this one with me. And if it's not, they may not get her back. Let me just grab the door. We're going to wee? Good girl. It's very frustrating. And it's a very simple husbandry thing that needs to be done, a bath every five days, four times, and it just hasn't been done. We'll find out if Ruby is allowed back home after the break. <laughs> also coming up... Super, super friendly. Yeah. You can't really get a friendlier dog than him. Lonely, malnourished Max has some company at last. What a difference in such a short space oh, of time. Gosh, yeah, it's <laughs> really, really good. And we meet senior citizen Labrador Ollie and his foster family. He's a lovely boy. He loves a stroke. He loves a bit of a attention. Fuss. Not fuss. Thank you. South of Nottingham, Inspector Sarah Gardner is dealing with Staffy Cross Ruby, whose owners have been served a warning notice. Come on, sausage. There's been some confusion over how often they should have been treating her mange, and as a result, they've failed to complete the course. Come on, that's it, good girl. As they also haven't got round to registering her with a vet, Sarah's brought Ruby to be assessed by one she knows, Christine Jameson. Hello, sweetheart. Oh, hello, my friend. Yes, I know. I love you too. You're very beautiful. She's had three of the four yeah. shampoos. She certainly looks better than she did. Yeah, she does. There's definite improvement there, to say the least. Yeah, she's nowhere near as red and sore as she was before. But does she still have mites? <laughs> I think we school take another skin scrape. I would expect so, especially if the course hasn't been finished properly. If vet Christine believes that the owners haven't done enough, she might recommend that Ruby isn't returned to them. I'm in a bit of a quandary. The owners have done something. They've not done everything. <sighs> Ruby's condition looks to have improved, but there could still be mites on her body. And what we're doing is we're taking a layer of skin cells and then transferring them. What a good girl. Onto a microscope slide. There we are. These mites are hard to spot, so more than one scrape is needed. Oh, she's good now. That's she's good so good. The problem is, is if the time period between the baths is too long, then we're not getting on top of the parasite problem. So we need to make sure the job's done thoroughly. Ruby's previously been diagnosed with demodactic mange, caused by mites that live around the hair follicles and they're only visible under a microscope. I have got a very obvious demodectic mange mite sitting right there, so they look like little carrots with legs. The treatment at the moment is not complete, and we're going to need to keep these baths going for probably another two or three at least. Demodectic mange is the worst sort of mange, really, for dogs. It is one of the hardest ones to get rid of. The question is, can Ruby's owners be relied on to complete her treatment? Are you happy to extend a warning notice and give them another chance? I think we've got to give them another chance. So if I issue them a notice today, yeah. what I'll say is on the warning notice that he must bath her tomorrow and then yeah. he must keep up anything. Keep them. And keep then to if the I treatment say to them, regime. If, if it's not kept to this time, then she's become, going. Yeah, they're becoming yeah. more serious. There we are. Come on, then, Ruby Tuesday. Thank you. Come on, then. So Ruby's going home, and her owners have been given another chance to treat her mange. I think we've given them every opportunity, and if they don't do it, then they're, they're clearly not responsible pet owners. And. Ruby would be in a, a better position elsewhere. All right, shh, shh, shh. Calm down. You have your weed, you little monkey. 
at the road. But it's not only Ruby that Sarah has to worry about here. The owners also have an elderly black lab named Jade who has late stage cancer. Oh, we're back. With regard to Jade, I explained to the vet that her tumour has changed yeah. and she was really very concerned that she wasn't registered at the vets. She needs, needs to be registered by Monday yeah, at the PDSA, OK. Ruby still has mites. I spoke to the vet at length about it. What she has said is if it isn't followed this time, then, you know, she would be looking yeah. to put a notice in saying that the dog's likely to suffer and, yeah. you know, we might need to take her. All right, see you later, sausage. You are a good girl, weren't you? You were very brave. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. Well, the good news is that Ruby and Jade's owners did register them with a vet and they completed Ruby's treatment, so she's now clear of mange. Now, let's meet another fella who was in need of TLC that wasn't being provided by his owner. A few months ago, Inspector Anthony Polfer was involved in the rescue of an elderly dog called Ollie. Ollie was quite a sad case where he was caught up in a house fire with his owner. They safely got out, but when the dog was removed from the address by the police in the fire brigade, they then discovered how much of a bad state Ollie was in. Really, what I saw in the police dog kennels was a very thin dog that I didn't think was going to make it. Curled up in a ball, every bone showing. Lots of old dogs do get some severe arthritis, but Ollie's arthritis was so severe that it even affected his jaw. And this obviously in turn means he couldn't eat, and this was completely missed by the dog's owner. But ultimately, the dog is starving to death almost. So he needed to be rescued. We rescued him just at the right time to then get the care that he needed. We were very lucky to have one of our RSPCA fosterers that could take on Ollie there's very few of these fosterers in the RSPCA, but the ones we have are like gold dust and absolutely dedicated to rescuing dogs and getting them back to health. 14-year-old Ollie was signed over by his owner and is now living with veteran fosterers Liz and Gary and their dogs Emma, Samson and Delilah. He was very skinny when he first arrived, but uh, he's been fattened up. It seemed to perk up when he met our other three Labradors. Gets on with the other dogs fine. He's a, a pleasure to foster. Golden oldie Ollie has made a great recovery thanks to daily medication for his arthritic legs and jaw. Now he's no longer in pain from his inflamed joints, he's able to open his mouth and eat normally again. He's put some weight on and he's probably the ideal weight. He's the oldest dog we've fostered and probably the easiest. He's a lovely boy. Certainly recommend fostering to someone who has got a bit of time. I don't think you really need any special qualifications other than to love dogs, really. Good boy. The pain relief has also made daily walks a lot easier for Ollie. It would be really nice if he could find someone who would get as much out of owning a dog like Ollie as we do fostering him. Good boy. Ollie's rescuer, Anthony, is dropping by to see how the old chap is getting on. Hi, Liz and Gary, how are you? Hello. Anthony. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Oh. Hello, Ollie. God, he looks amazing. Would you believe it, eh? God, it's been a couple of months since I've seen him. He has put on a lot of weight. <laughs> Not too uh, much, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> I think when I met Ollie, I think I could put my hands round his waist, right yeah. round and join, so he's, the coverage is amazing there. Once emaciated and close to starving, Ollie's now looking much healthier and happier. I appreciate what fosterers do and, have, you know, the work it takes to get a dog back to full health like this. So I really appreciate what you've done for Ollie and hopefully him here will have a happy rest of his life and, uh, Hopefully we try and find him a new home. Absolutely. Well, you know, you know where we are. 
for the next one after oh. you found him a new home. <laughs> yeah, we're more than happy to, to take another. That's one dedicated fosterer right there. If he stays with Liz and Gary or gets a new home, Ollie's twilight years should be happy ones from now on. OK, that Ollie, I'm going to get back to work. <clears throat> yeah, good boy. Yeah. This is why I do my job, to come and see people like Liz and Gary who put all that hard work into getting the dog back to health. They're the dog rescuers, but hopefully now Ollie will go on, live the rest of his days as a healthy dog. Ultimately, that's just what I want, and I'm really chuffed. As you've just seen, fosterers play a vital role in caring for dogs that just wouldn't do well in kennels, and they're in short supply. So I'm meeting Simon McArdle, a supervisor at Leybourne Animal Centre, to find out more about what makes a suitable fosterer. So, Simon, there's a demand for foster carers, is there? Yeah, definitely. What can... are you looking for in a fosterer? Mostly someone with a lot of time, really. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we need uh, people who are going to be home most of the day with these dogs, um, because you know, the kind of dogs you know, that um, we're looking to put out to foster homes, um, you know, they're going to need quite a lot of time, care and attention. Okay. The kind of dogs that sometimes struggle in the kennels environment. Yeah, so you're generally going to be having dogs that yeah, maybe aren't coping well with, with kennels, find it quite stressful. Um, you may have dogs that are either very old or very young, or maybe you know, even a, a dog who's part of an ongoing case, so may be in kennels for months and months and months on end. Yeah, it's going to be far better off in a foster home. And if you were to be a, a fosterer, how long would you expect to have a dog for? It completely varies, to be honest. If someone was having um, their puppies, they would foster them until they were old enough to be up for rehoming. If it's a case dog, um, it's up until you know that case comes to an end. Um, so you know, those things, they can really shut down for long periods of time. Yeah, it can be a very long yeah. time. Yeah. And this is your one. You took this one home. Were yeah. you supposed to be fostering and then couldn't give him back? Is that what happened? No, he was. He would have been um, a potentially good um, good choice for foster here because he was a case dog initially. Unfortunately, his case concluded pretty quickly. Um, and once he was uh, kind of signed over looking for a home, I was on the lookout for a dog myself at the time. So he was a, a perfect fit. Good for you. <laughs> good for him. It's very good for him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dex, <laughs> come with me. <laughs> <laughs> he probably would as well. <laughs> he would. He would. a biscuit. <laughs> now it's back to our doggy in the window. Hey, hey, fella. Earlier we met Max. It is thin. You can see the spine sort of coming all along the top and onto his onto his tail as well. The skinny whippet cross, whose life had been lacking when it came to company and food. The state of him wouldn't be acceptable on a person, so it's not acceptable on an animal. It's been almost a month since the two-year-old was rescued by Inspector Kate Parker, and she's keen to see how he's been getting on at Gonsal Farm Animal Centre near Shrewsbury. I'm expecting him to have put on a considerable amount of weight over the last few weeks because um, he's been had, you know, he's had a suitable diet. Um, so it'll be good to see, you know, him without bones protruding and, you know, as a proper dog should be. Hello. <laughs> Hello, you. Oh, hello. Hello. I'm dirty. Max seems overjoyed to see Kate, to say the least. Thanks to the staff here, including animal care assistant Dawn Bisbee, it seems this little fella has a definite spring in his step and a posh new red coat. <laughs> Very playful, then. Super, super friendly. Yeah. You can't really get a friendlier dog than him. He <laughs> loves people. Bless Fantastic. him. Fantastic. And how's his weight come on? Because he was quite underweight with water man, He was, he, yeah. He's, he's gaining weight. Yeah. He's doing it nicely, steadily. So, yeah, yeah. he's looking brilliant now. So. Good. And he's got his coat. He has, yeah. Just to protect him just from the cold, because, say, he's still not to the ideal weight yet. To see just how well Max is doing, Kate's going to have a look underneath that coat. Shall we take your coat off, shall we? You've got your clean coat. Ooh. It's all a game to this lovable lad. Just oh, look great. at that tail go. What a difference in such a short space oh, of time. Gosh, yeah, it's really, really good. <laughs> Completely different dog. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> He's looking him. really, really yeah. good now. He's certainly a far cry from the skinny dog that was rescued four weeks ago. So when I brought him in, he had a wound on his back end, um, and it was from where his hip bone had been sticking out so much that he'd been sat on it, and it oh. caused a pressure sore. Um, so... <laughs> yes. It's good to see that it's completely gone. Yes, definitely, <laughs> definitely. He is just a happy dog. <laughs> and since Happy Max has arrived here, he's got himself a new hobby. Come on, then. Playing with his ball. 
Good boy. <laughs> Thank you. Leave it. Good boy. You sit. There's a good boy. You bark. <laughs> yes. We can hear you. Leave it. Good boy. You sit. Good boy. The clever lad seems to have mastered multitasking, fetching the ball and barking at the same time. I think his barking's going to be a thing, isn't it? Ready? Yeah. You can make a noise. Oh, there we go. <laughs> He's like a ventriloquist. Well, this vocal chappy is certainly full of life, which bodes well for finding his forever home. Definitely ball home. Mm. Come on, then. He's a lovely dog, very sociable, <coughs> loves people, which is surprising, really, because his, his previous home, where, where I picked him up from, um, he was left for long, long periods of time with no human interaction, no, no toys, no nothing. So to see him now playing with toys and interacting with people was great. We'll see how Max's search for a new home goes later. Also coming up, she was terrorised by her owner, but Ellie's learning to trust again. She's absolutely incredible. She's the most loving dog I've worked with. And if you need a rescue dog in your life, stay tuned, it could be your lucky day. Earlier, we met Max, the sad and underweight doggy in the window, left home alone by his owner. That dog cannot stay in the house. It's far too thin, his bones are sticking out of his bag. When Inspector Kate Parker rescued him, he was so ravenous, he scoffed down a worming tablet as if it was his favourite chicken dinner. He's so hungry, he's eating worming tablets for the treat. Yeah. His owner agreed to sign him over and was given a written caution. Now, four months on, this lively lad couldn't have made himself any more at home. <laughs> With his new owners, Sheila and Rob Miller. Comfy there, Max? I think there was a dog-shaped hole in the family. We saw his picture on the RSPCA website. I think it was just one of those love at first sight things, I guess. I'm glad we made a decision to find a dog, and uh, I'm glad it was Max. He makes us laugh all the time. When he's playing, he, he tends to walk around with his toys in his mouth trying to bark. Still working on the act? Yeah. Lovely Quite noise. Funny. <laughs> makes everyone laugh. Just seem a happy, healthy dog. When dogs are happy, they wag their tail, don't they? And he's got a very waggy tail. <laughs> and this cheerful chap has another talent too. I think he's half kangaroo. <laughs> Definitely think he's half kangaroo. I didn't expect that he would be able to get on the kitchen worktops, but he can. You can jump on them in one fell swoop. Oh, there you go. Ready on. And he was very pleased the day he showed me that he could do that the first time. Seems old habits die hard for Max. Very, very curious about the world and, you know, what's out there but he's not left sitting home alone these days. Do you want to go for a walk? Do you? OK, let's get your lead, Max. I'm this one. And when it's time for walkies, the whole family go along. Yeah, we're coming, Max, we're coming. Max likes coming here. It's one of his favourite things, chasing the ball on the field. Sit. Ready, go. Come on, Max. Oh, Max's got a lovely nature. Nice and energetic, though. It's a lovely looking dog, isn't he? It's great to bring him out here and where he can burn off his energy. He enjoys himself here, and he's always tired out after half an hour on the field with the ball. That's a good boy. Back at home, Max always remembers to wipe his paws on the way in. Well, with a bit of help from Sharon and Rob's daughter, Bryony. Then he can go on the sofa, can't you? Coming in? But maybe not the worktop this time. First, though, time for some well-earned grub. Good boy. Can you sit? Max loves his food. Thanks to regular meals, he's now up to his ideal weight. Put on about a kilogram while he's been with us. And that was a good boy, wasn't it? Did you enjoy that? You like your turkey and rice, don't you? Well, pizza worming tablet. He's a good boy. Happy boy. 
for Belly. Been chasing the ball for ages. Nice walk. Very lovable. Oh, tiring work being so adored, right, Max? And you can hear him starting to snore now. What more could a dog want, eh? It's the happy ending Max truly deserves. Bless him. Remember 18-month-old Ellie, who was chased around the garden by her owner? He claimed he was trying to train her as a guard dog by emulating a technique he'd seen online. He admitted causing her unnecessary suffering by using threatening behaviour and was banned from keeping dogs for 12 months. Ellie was signed over, but had been left terrified of men. Yeah, see, strangers. Good girl. She's still at RSPCA Preston under the care of Georgie and the behavioural team. It's been a month since we last saw her. Where you go? And Ellie has made something of a breakthrough. She really comes out of a shell once she gets used to you, but initially she'll sort of see a guy and keeps a distance until she's sussed them out, really. And once she realises that they are going to be nice to her, she'll be nice to them in return. <laughs> Animal care assistant Alex has seen the brave girl's improvement firsthand. When I was first approaching her, she was very nervous. All I did was reduce how I stood, so I lowered my stance so I wasn't crowding over her. I talked to her in a soft voice, spent a bit of time with her, and then she warmed up to the idea that I might be an all right person. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Ellie. Once she gets to know you and once she's got your trust, then she's absolutely incredible. She's the most loving dog I've worked with. Just wants cuddles all the time. <laughs> I want her. <laughs> she just needs a home with someone that's going to love her and give her the time she needs to come out of her shell. I'll be really sad to see her go. Oh, yeah, I love this dog so much. Well, shortly after filming, Ellie did find her new home and with a male owner, Martin Hickson, and his wife, Angela. What a great result for Georgie and the team at Preston. Good girl. And what news of 14-year-old Ollie, the fostered Labrador cross? Well, hot off the press, he's gone and found himself a new forever home too. And here he is with his new family. Good on you, boy. As you've seen in the programme, many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life, but that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them, and there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. This is Crystal. She's eight years old and a Staffordshire Bull Terrier crossbreed. She's been at Block Fen for eight months now. You're just an angel, aren't you? She was abandoned, so it's really hard for us to know where she was, what she was doing, what she loved, did she have a family. <coughs> She's been here for so long. She's been so patient. The person who gives Crystal that chance will be the luckiest person in the world. Crystal is a fun, intelligent sit. Down, good girl. Loving, cheeky girl who will completely lighten up your life. She's looking for a home where she will be the only animal. I can't preach enough that whoever gives her that chance, they won't need another animal because she will make your house into a home. They will have a one in a million dog, they really will. It's a good girl. Hey. So, if you're looking for a four legged best friend in your life, Remember to make your local rescue centre your first stop, where you'll find plenty of deserving candidates desperate to brighten up your home. Hello and welcome to the Dog Rescuers. In this show we have incredible stories of survival and dogs who, despite difficult starts in life, have all shown an amazing ability to bounce back. And today I'm at Leybourne Animal Centre looking after this one and various siblings who have all scarpered helpfully. Come and be on the programme. Coming up. So 
an anxious German shepherd rescued after being mistreated by his owner. We need to just get him checked over by the vet to make sure he's OK. Oh, and there's one and another one. Two-week-old puppies covered in fleas. Inspector Jackie Miller gets to them in the nick of time. Oh, they're running everywhere. They have got a lot of fleas that can kill them. Come on then, mate. You've got a big day today. And we're back with our rescued spaniel, Ted, as he embarks on sniffer dog training. So we can see the anticipation, can't we? Good. But does he have what it takes to make the grade? It's a bit like, a bit like an anxious father here. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Lauren, it's Mel. Hi, Mel, are you all right? Yeah, you. In Bedfordshire, Inspector Mel Fisher is on her way to rescue an 11-month-old German shepherd called Zeus, who's being mistreated by his owner. I've received a complaint and some footage with regards to a dog being beaten in um, a garden. The video shows a man attacking his young dog. You may find what you're about to see disturbing. <laughs> it's really upsetting to witness and hear animals in distress and um, this animal clearly is in distress. It's clear that the um, owner of the dogs punched this dog a, a couple of times. The owner appears to hit young Zeus so hard he hurts his own fists. The 11-month-old dog must be terrified and, just like with us, blows to the head can cause serious damage. Mel wants to get him out of there, but she still has to follow the law. I have to act within the constraints of the legislation that we've got. So I've had a vet review the footage to see whether that dog's suffering or likely to suffer if left in those circumstances. As a result, I've now got a Section 18 vet certificate, which means I can contact the police. Then I can take steps to have the dog removed. When you know that you've got to go and investigate an allegation of somebody beating their dog, it is a worry. And so it's um, always nice to have a police officer with you because you just don't know what you're walking into. From the sounds of things, Zeus is at home. But will his owner agree to let him go quietly? Hello there, I'm from the RSPCA. I had a call about your dog. Can we come in and chat? We've had allegations and we have witnesses to say that you've been beating Zeus. Um, based on this information, we are obliged to take the dog into possession under the Animal Welfare Act to keep it safe while we investigate what's happened. Sometimes I scream for a dog, you know, because I, he uh, doesn't listen. Yeah, that, that's your I, I play, play, play with him, but don't beat him. The owner claims it's just rough play. <laughs> but the overwhelming evidence says otherwise. People who hit their dogs are essentially bullies. They are taking their aggression and frustration out on an animal. It is not acceptable in any circumstances. We need to remove him to a place of uh, safety. We, 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 can, uh, we can don't accept that. Doesn't matter. I'm obliged to seize him. So you've got no choice. With the police's support, Mel can take young Zeus. I'll be coming back to interview you. These are serious yeah, allegations. Yeah, yeah. Come on then. Good boy. It's OK. As soon as Zeus gets out of the house, he appears to be showing signs of anxiety. Who knows what this poor lad has been through? Good boy. It's in his best interests to be removed from the property. Oh, good boy. He's a big lad to lift. Good boy. We need to just get him checked over by the vet to make sure he's OK, and then we'll drop him somewhere um, safe while we investigate what's happened. He doesn't look too bad considering what we've seen on footage, so that's really good news. 
fingers crossed there won't be any lasting damage to Zeus. In Bedfordshire, Inspector Mel Fisher has rescued 11-month-old Zeus, a German shepherd. Oh, good boy. Come on, should we go see the vet? Mel received complaints and footage which showed Zeus being punched by his owner. Good boy. Right, we need to grab your lead. Good lad. You're coming down. Good boy. There we go. And she's brought him to see vet Daisy Sutton to find out if the beatings have caused anxious Zeus any lasting damage. Hi, Zeusy. Hi, you are huge. You've got a very thick colour and lead. Super duper, right. Calm, calm, good boy. I know, darling. Perhaps as a result of what he's been through, Zeus isn't keen on having his head touched. I know, I know, darling. Good boy. So Daisy checks the rest of his good, body first. Good boy, I know, honey. Oh, all the way down. Can you need him up again. You good boy, yes. You're a handsome boy. boy. Perfect. <laughs> oh, what was that? Are you talking? Oh, there we go, perfect. In the video, it was, I feel like it was the right side of his face, I feel like he was yeah, not having fun with. Have a look. Zeusy Pops, can I have a little oh, look, darling? Boy. I know you're nervous, darling. Good boy. Good boy, Zeusors. I'm not having much reaction, which is good news. Thankfully, it looks as though Zeus hasn't got a head injury. But whilst they're inspecting him, Mel discovers something else. I've just realised that's not nice, what they've just put on him. That's a horrible spiky chain you've had in there. Let's get that off. Oh, you're a big I'm lad. Okay. Horrible, horrible things. Oh, you're free. Zeus's owner handed him over wearing a pinch collar. These can cause pain and distress to a dog. The collar goes round the throat, and then as the dog pulls against the choke chain, the spikes then stick into the throat, um, trying to train them, I guess, not to pull. But there's kind of, far kind of ways to do it. Really nasty. You can see, look, it's left imprints on my hand. Although this type of collar isn't illegal, animal charities would like to see them banned. I'm so sorry, Zeus. I didn't realise that was what you had on you. I think it's concerning that the, the owner obviously thought it was fine to put it on and then give the dog to you as well. Yeah. You know, it's a concern that he thinks is completely normal enough that you wouldn't mind it as well. Thankfully, his, his neck looks OK. He's lucky that he's a big dog with a big, thick load of fur around his neck. So it's not caused any damage I can see at the moment. So that's good news for him. <laughs> he's looking pretty good health-wise. I think he's got a lucky escape. OK, thank you. Oh, good luck with it. Bye. Bye. Come on, then, Zeus. Good boy. Good boy. This way. This way, put him. It just really saddens me that not only has that dog been put through what we've seen in the footage, they also seem to think it's perfectly acceptable for the dog to wear a, a chain with barbs in it, which in essence just pull onto the dog's skin. German Shepherds are really clever and it doesn't take a lot for them to learn through positive reinforcement. There's just, there's just no need for it. On the surface, Zeus looks OK. Right, let's shut you up. But what he's endured at the hands of his owner may have left deeper emotional scars. It's all going to be good, little man. Good boy. It's OK, Puddy. We'll find out how he's getting on later. Now, as far as I'm concerned, there's only one place for this. Meanwhile, in Sunderland, Inspector Jackie Miller is dealing with a very different case. She's on her way to collect a family of dogs from an owner who's struggling and has called for help. It's a lady that we've been working with for quite a while. Um, unfortunately, the environment in which the dogs and herself are not really, really that good. She's got four adults and five two-week-old puppies. 
the nine dogs, three generations of crossbreeds, have been kept inside and are using the house as a toilet. I attended on the weekend and unfortunately no improvements had really been made at all. She's just got to the point where she's accepted she can't cope anymore. So she's rang us and asked to rehome them. Each year, thousands of dogs are signed over to the RSPCA. So this type of situation isn't uncommon for Jackie. You all right? Hiya. Are they in? Are they all in? Hi, guys. Come on, back, back, back. You still not managed to have a little bit of a clean up? I, I can't even imagine looking after more than one dog, how people do it with sort of three, four, five, six. I, I, I don't know. It's just so much work. You know, it's four, five, six times worth of poop. Vet bills, food. Don't stand in the poop. I don't want poopy paws. No. As well as faeces on the floor, the family of dogs are infested with fleas, which can cause anemia in puppies and in severe cases can be fatal. It's all scratching, guys, I know. I think they might be biting me. Fleas are a pain. <laughs> um, yeah, you'll sometimes be driving along and all of a sudden one will go ping. Um, yeah, they're horrible, horrible little things. They just get everywhere. With nearly enough dogs to form a football team, Jackie wants to reassure the owner she's made the right call. I don't think you've made this decision lightly. We'll get them sorted. Don't worry. OK. Good boy, Miley. First of the flea-ridden family taken to the van is the puppy's dad, Marley. Come here, Sonna. It's all right. Good boy. It's OK. But the outside world is a lot to take in for the poor lad. Good lad, I know. You don't get out very often, do you, Sonna? Come on. You've got a lot to do. In you go. Put him. Good boy. Next out is the puppy's big brother, Pumba, who, unlike Marley, is keen to make an exit. On a wee wee? Not, not on the camera. It's all right, big lad. No? No wee wees? Come on, then. Good lad, Pumba. Come on. I know it's scary. It's all different, isn't it? It won't be long, lads. Good girl, Jessie. Pumba is followed by Jessie, the puppy's 12-year-old gran. Oh, good girl. In we go. Who can't wait to get into the van. And last but not least, Jackie brings out Mum, called Nana. This could get confusing. And her five two-week-old pups. Come on, Nana. We'll put puppies in here. Her coat is in a terrible state, with fur missing on her back end. Nana! Come on! Up, up, up. Good girl. Unfortunately, the situation's not really changed since I was there on the weekend. There's lots of feces all over the place, urine. You can see just fleas running through the dogs. It's not nice, it's uncomfortable for them. They're all scratching in there, they're all nibbling. So I'm just happy that we've actually managed to get them out of there eventually. Is everyone in? With the full load, Jackie needs to get this canine clan checked out by a vet. Wow, Jackie's certainly got her hands full with that lot. She's not the only one. Now, if you've ever wondered what it takes to train a police dog, then you're in luck, because we're back with Super Rescue Dog Ted and our exclusive access to the Sniffer Dog Training School. I'm fine. <laughs> Good. Earlier this series, we met Super Spaniel Ted. I like his search ethic already. He's all over it. Rescued from a squalid bedsit, police dog trainer Lee Webb saw potential in him. And clearly using his nose, and that's not his eyes. Earning him a place on the sniffer dog course. Yeah, he's got it. He's been teamed up with PC Sam Dutton, and this is the first time she's trained a sniffer dog. Everything from here on in is new to me, so a little bit of pressure on myself, because I don't want to let Ted down. Come on then, mate. You've got a big day today. 
The serious instruction from trainer PC Lee Webb starts here. Big day today. Yeah, it's a very big day Introduce today. Introduce Ted to <laughs> three substances. Three. Dogs are invaluable in the fight against crime. They make our job uh, considerably easier when it comes to detecting illegal substances. And I can't see a time when we won't be using them to help us. What we're going to do to start with is we're going to load him up for clicker. So I'm going to hand the tools over to you, all right? Yeah. So it's click, ball, click, ball. Come on, boy. They're building Ted's response to a clicker. As long as he gets that yeah. sound reward, sound reward, sound reward, OK? Have a look, play with that. Good, nice. To Ted, the clicker indicates a reward is coming. Playtime with a ball. I'll just distract him and then you click and be ready to give that ball. Ted. Yes, oh we're there. My good okay. boy. But before he can find drugs, they need to test him on finding something familiar. A tennis ball. Sam's gonna work him along each chair in turn. And hopefully when he gets to the ball, oh yeah, I know that smell, that's a tennis ball. And we'll get a reaction from him. So we're just going to pop that in between the two chairs. OK, Sam? Ted looks keen to get cracking. So what we're looking for is a pause or a recognition of some sort of scent. OK, go for it. And he's off to a flying start. Okay. So that's what we were looking for. We were looking for a reaction from the dog and we mark the behaviour we want, then he gets to play. Dogs are superior to us when it comes to smelling for things. They have over 200 million more scent receptors than a human being, which makes them much better at locating substances than we are. Yay! Good boy! Good boy. Right, we're ready now to start the formal introduction of substances, OK? okay. okay. Now for the real challenge. Ted has to sniff out three drugs, which will be hidden alongside the ball. Amphetamine, cocaine and ecstasy. So when the dog goes out in a moment, he's actually looking or sniffing for the ball. When he inhales, he's going to take the smell of the ball and the scent of the drugs in at the same time. Find it. Good boy. Ted's making it look easy, so Lee's going to up the ante on the novice duo. Oh, you're very good. Right, now we're going to surprise her, OK? <laughs> so I've just taken the ball out, so Sam won't be aware of this. So from now on, Sam's dog is just going to be searching for drugs only. So it's a big step, a crucial step. Same again, mate, all right? So just. He's excited, is he? Oh, very. Yeah. No, very. Yeah. So we can see the anticipation, can't we? Good. Oh. It's a bit, like, a bit like an anxious father here. <laughs> <laughs> so he's working her in quite nicely. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Come on, Ted. Good yeah. boy! It's a good feeling when you know that the team is starting to work well together and that the dogs, it's got what it takes. It's, it's a real pleasure to watch. Let's see the thrill on Sam's face when she sees that her dog's actually now searching for drugs, OK? Not a tennis ball and drugs. This is just the drugs. So you can be able to get the ball out. OK. Where is the ball? So you haven't had a ball in there. <laughs> so clever, do I get all the moves? <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, he's trained. He's not. Yeah. <laughs> he well, well, That's well, fantastic. Well. Ted's on a high, but will he still be top of the class as his training continues? Stay with us to find out. Right, Nana, you're going to let us see your pups? Coming up. I hope you can see them. They're running right over his little face there. Are flea-infested Nana and her tiny, two-week-old pups' problems only skin deep? It can make them quite anemic and make them very ill and can kill them. And we catch up with Zeus to see how he's adapting to life away from the owner that beat him. He can still be a little bit unsure at first of people that he doesn't know, but literally after a treat or two, he's your best friend. <laughs> Hi, guys! 
In Sunderland, a flea-infested family of four adult dogs and five puppies... Who wants a doggy? ..have been signed over to Inspector Jackie Miller. This is Jessie. She's 12. And she's brought this muttly crew to be examined by vet Kirsty Hosford. Pumba. Pumba, as in Pumba from The Lion King. Hello, Pumba. Apart from fleas, Granny Jessie and Big Brother Pumba appear to be OK. A bit of flea treatment then, maybe? Yeah, I think mm. so. Next one. So vet Kirsty turns her attention to the young family. This is Marley. Starting with Dad Marley. Hello, Marley. You good boy. He's got some little scabby areas here on his back. He just needs flea and run treatment as well. He's in reasonable body condition. But it's Nana, who is actually the mama, and her puppies that Jackie's most concerned about. This is Nana. Come on with me, Nana. Mama. Nana. <laughs> She's got a lot of fur loss. She's got a lot of fur loss. Yes. This is an allergy to the flea bites. So whenever the fleas bite her, it causes a, an irritation on the skin and she licks it at herself and pulls the hair out and gets secondary infections. But actually, her skin's not looking too bad. But she does have loads of fleas. She's still, oh, God, oh, she's, she's got a little collection there, there. Isn't she? A collection of them. Oh, yeah, she's got a little look at them all. As well. Good girl. Yeah. Are you worried? It's okay. Are you worried about? Good girl. Puppies are there. She doesn't have loads of milk. On the weekend, I had to drop food off for the owner. She had very little food. Ah, uh, right. So I don't know if she's been getting exactly what she needs. Good girl. Right, Nana. You gonna let us see your pups? Hmm. Hello. You can see the fleas running on them, though. Nana's tiny two-week-old pups are teeming with fleas, too, making them itchy and distressed. Oh, no, and there's one and another one. What was all? Oh, look, you can see them. Oh, they're running everywhere. Oh. Fleas are parasites that thrive in warm, damp environments. Their eggs can live for up to a year in carpets, furniture and bedding. I think we'll spray these pups before they go down to the animal centre. OK. Um, and then at least we know that they've been done, cos they have got a lot of fleas that run right over his little face there. Yeah. Little small pups, that it can make them quite anemic and make them very ill and can kill them. But there's good news for this little brood. These pups are quite robust, so they'll probably be fine. They don't, they don't look anemic at all and they're certainly not unwell. Medication given to adult dogs would be too strong for such tiny pups, so Jackie and vet nurse Helen Johnson set to work with a flea spray. I know, I'm sorry, darling. There you go, and just give it a squidge around. Squidge around. Well done, pups. Oh, oh, oh. Get them, get them. Nasties. You all look wet, that's good job done. It's only when all the pups have been sprayed that they can see how bad the flea infestation is. Oh, you can see them running for, a, running for the hills. Yeah. Look at them all. Poor little things. They're everywhere. It's like his head's actually moving. Oh, it's making my skin crawl. It's been a long time since I've seen that many fleas on a puppy and, and they were all running over everywhere. So I'm glad that they've came here because potentially if they hadn't and they hadn't been signed over, those pups could have been ill. Good boy, Marley. Oh. Oh. They're all loaded in the van and I'm going to take them to the animal home to get them sorted and bedded down, uh, ready for rehoming. Right, see you in about 10 minutes, dudes. We'll find out how this young family settle into a flea-free life later. But first, I'm finding out more about what you should consider if you're thinking of taking on a puppy from centre supervisor Simon McArdle. Simon, these are puppies, am I correct? Yep, you are correct, they are puppies. They're identifiable by the fact that they won't do what you want, <laughs> go where you want. If you wanted to get a puppy, what should you know? I mean, I should say, first of all, that you should go to your local animal centre, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. So rescue centres are um, always full of wanted litters. Other things to consider is that, you know, they're a huge time commitment, a lot of training, a lot of socialising. 
At what point can you start getting them to do what you want? <laughs> <laughs> Training starts from day one, really. If you don't want to have a, a dog on the bed or maybe on the sofa, if you kind of make that a rule from day one, then it's going to be much easier for them to, to learn that from the start. Whereas if they're allowed to do what they want right from the start, and then you try and teach them new things, it's going to be really confusing for them. So be consistent with what you're trying to teach them and start you know, building that bond, giving them the training. So it's a nice experience for both of you. And it's a good idea if they can get on with other dogs. So when does socialization begin? So see, that again, this is the word for making friends that we use in dog land. Begins um, at a very early age. <laughs> um, as soon as they're old enough for the vaccinations, around nine weeks old. Um, and it's really important at that you know, young age where they're really inquisitive and you know, want to experience new things that you allow them to do it in a positive way. So they grow up to be you know, confident dogs that take new experiences in their strides and enjoy meeting new people and, new, and other dogs. But meeting other dogs can bring its own disasters, can it not? It can do, <laughs> yep. Uh, so that's, that's why it's important to have uh, your dog spayed and neutered. I mean, one of the reasons why animal centres you know, around the country are so full is because of unexpected litters. So, socialise them, chip them, spay or neuter them, train them. It's a long list. <laughs> <laughs> While these little ones are destined for a life of pampering, we're heading back to the West Country to catch up with a dog that likes to earn his keep. Spaniel Ted, originally rescued from a filthy bedsit, has been going great guns in his first week of sniffer dog training. He's already cracked finding a combo of three drugs together, but now he's got to detect a singular substance, cocaine, in an unfamiliar environment. Hopefully, he'll give us a freeze on the box. <laughs> Don't worry, until he actually sniffs that box, we're not going to worry about it, OK? So we just got to maintain our cool, you know? He's gone. It's quite a big step. Ted's struggling to find the drug, even though it's right under his nose. Just put him on a lead a minute, Sam. So Lee tries a different tack. OK, what I want you to do is, just like it was a chair, task him straight to the box, OK? OK. Because what, what might be happening is we've had three substances out together. Yeah. If he's not taken on one of those on board, it might be the reason. Oh. It's like, no, that's not the one I recognise. Come on, Ted, you can do it. No, we're not getting any sort of recognition there at all at the moment, no. are we? Nothing. No, because he's still... There's nothing, he's still working, he's still sniffing. Yeah. No. OK, back to the drawing board. It's disappointing, but Lee has to take Ted back to basics, sniffing out three different drugs in a space he's more comfortable with. Ted. Starting with amphetamine, but Ted seems more interested in jumping than sniffing. So each one, make sure he sniffs it. That's it. Yay! Good boy! Yay! Good boy! Thank God oh, for that. Got it. Yes. I'm a bit relieved there, Sam. <laughs> Come on, we're cool. We're cool. We're okay, cool, I'm relieved. Man. I'm relieved. We're cool. Okay. We're good. I'm not impervious to disappointment, and uh, I was really disappointed. Hopefully, we're back on track now. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put one of the other substances out, do the same thing again, until we've done it with all three. To me, when I turn up every morning, we've got to go out there. We've got to produce the goods. We've got to go out there and work really hard as a team, because if we don't, we might not, we might not be a team. That, that's, that's how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Clever dog. Good boy. Okay. Ted has indeed come up with the goods. <laughs> I'm going to make him work a little bit harder. He's had successful searches of both ecstasy and cocaine. Good boy. Good boy. But could he be trying to put one over on both Lee and Sam? Well, as I understand it, he's trying to shortcut to his reward. He's trying to be clever, so just let him leave it in his own time. So he knows that if he shows that freeze that we're looking for, what has happened then has come the clicker and his reward. So because he's super clever, he's now offering up that behaviour to get his reward quicker. So he's got to learn that actually, no, that isn't what we want. We only want it when you're right. Yay, good boy. Good boy. Right. He's a clever dog, you know. 
but is he clever enough to do what he couldn't do before, find drugs in an unfamiliar environment with lots of other smells? It's something he'll have to do in the line of duty. I have no idea how well this is going to go, but we're going to give it a shot, and um, it's quite extreme. We've got a hide and a skip. Ted's had nothing like this before, so it's, it's quite a big ask for him, really. This time, they've reduced the amount of drugs to just one gram of cocaine hidden in a beer can. Find it. Oh, ah, ah, ah. What's he got there? <laughs> Something sandwich. Oh, dear. It's not lunchtime yet, Ted. <laughs> Dirty. <laughs> oh, he's got it. He's got the scent there. Come on, Ted. Focus. Good boy. Find it there, Teddy. Yay! Yes. Good yes. boy. Well done, Ted. A relieved end to the day. I got where I wanted to be. Uh, we've got Ted finding substance down to a gram, and that's what we set out to achieve this morning. Ted has made amazing progress. This unwanted rescue spaniel could soon be a valuable working dog. I would be really distraught if he didn't make it through his course. I'd be absolutely heartbroken because I've fallen in love with a little dog in just over a week. We'll catch up with Ted again later in the series. Four weeks ago, Inspector Jackie Miller rescued a family of dogs who were infested with fleas. And today she's back to pay mum and her pups a visit. Good girl, Nana. She's doing really, really well. She's an amazing mum, aren't you? Being sniggly coming down. When, I got, when I've been in the animal home, come down to see how she's getting on, see how the puppies are progressing. Most of our fur's come back now. It's still not as dense as here, but it's all grown back. It's nearly there. Yeah, good mummy. You are so good. With Mum on the road to recovery, there's been a huge improvement with her little ones too. Oh, it's amazing to see them from what they were. They were the size of your head. <laughs> I can't even see one little flea. Mm. I could have seen more fleas and puppies the last time I saw you. Mm. More fleas and puppies. All of them are just... <gasps> If you do that to me laces, I can't go and do more. <laughs> Get off. He's a naughty. <laughs> She's not up for rehoming yet, but all the puppies are spoken for. With all the puppies now reserved, Jackie's happy she came to their rescue. There's a high potential that if the puppies hadn't have been treated for the amount of fleas that they had, um, you know, they could have developed some complications because of it. And they might not have all been here. And to see them like this is just amazing. Best part of the job. <laughs> ah, get off! Yeah, get off them, guys. Jackie's going to need her shoes, because there's good news for another member of the family. <laughs> Marley! The pup's dad, Marley, has found his fairy tale ending too, with the Story family. They've reserved him and are looking forward to taking him home very soon. And with her laces intact, Molly sit. Jackie's joining them. <laughs> no kisses. More kisses. Sit. I need a company for Rosie, the dog. She's on her own and she's just lying around all day, so she needed a friend. And uh, also, I want the children to grow up loving dogs. He's going to be your little pal. <laughs> Crazy dog. Look at that face. He's just amazing. And look what he's doing with the kids now. They already love him. So that's a good sign, isn't it? And, uh, and at least Marley will let them play. Whereas Rosie doesn't. She, she, she runs away and hides. <laughs> Such a nice feeling to see them just out and about in this sort of environment and getting to know where they're going, you know? It's, uh, it's really, really nice to see. Just what we like. Happy endings all round. Coming up, 
we catch up with German Shepherd Zeus and see if there's a happy ending for him too. Um, he's got bundles of energy. He's just a big playful puppy, to be honest with you. And if you think you've got what it takes to be a dog rescuer, we might just have the one for you. Earlier, we met anxious German Shepherd Zeus. At just 11 months old, his owner had been filmed beating him. But Inspector Mel Fisher came to the rescue. He looks OK, but obviously we need to just get him checked over by the vet to make sure. Thankfully, there was no lasting physical damage. Zeusy Pops, can I have a little look, darling? But unsurprisingly, he was showing signs of anxiety. I know you're nervous, darling as well as being forced to wear a pinch collar. You can see, look, it's left imprints on my hand. Good boy. Well done. Good boy. Five months on, and Zeus has been living at Blackbury Farm Animal Centre in Aylesbury, where animal care assistant Charlie Wright has been helping him rebuild his confidence. When he first came in, he was a bundle of nerves. He would cower away from us, he'd growl at us in the kennel. He didn't trust us. He can still be a little bit unsure at first of people that he doesn't know, but literally after a treat or two, he's your best friend. <laughs> he's got bundles of energy. He's just a big, playful puppy, to be honest with you. But it always amazes me how loving and forgiving they can be. He might be forgiving, but Zeus did get justice for his terrible treatment. His ex-owner pleaded guilty to causing unnecessary suffering, receiving a 12-week suspended prison sentence, a ban from keeping animals for five years, as well as 100 hours of community service and over £600 in costs to pay. It was reported that Zeus's owner had shown remorse for his actions, and if he could go back and change things, he would. And just seven weeks after sentencing, Zeus was snapped up by a new loving owner, Nicola. He caught my eye and straight away, that was it. And the feeling's mutual. He's very loyal already, very protective. Loves his cuddles. He's always climbing on you, he thinks he's a lap dog. He does love a cuddle, so it is nice. Since landing on all paws with Nicola, this playful chap is coming on in leaps and bounds. Considering what he has been through, he, he isn't that nervous of people on the whole and, you know, he doesn't shy away from anything. This come, come on, come on. When you have dogs like this, you need to be really confident around them because they pick up on your emotions. So the fact that I don't get worried about things and sort of stay nice and calm, hopefully that makes him realise that everything's good and nothing bad's going to happen. It's worlds apart from where Zeus started life. I'd like to think he's got a really good home with me. We love our exercise, go out running with him. He loves his swimming as well, so we go down to the River Thames every now and again, and he's straight in. He goes to dog classes, and he's doing really well there. He's a very intelligent dog, and he, he wants to please all the time. He's really willing to learn. Zeus really has settled into his new home. Um, comes and wakes me up in the morning, so I get a wet nose in my face to wake me up. Who needs an alarm clock, eh? He prefers to sleep downstairs on the sofa, I think. He thinks I don't know, but I do. Mm. <laughs> you silly boy. Oh, silly. Oh, we're going to have a lovely future together. Yeah, a very long one, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Full of fun. Good on you, Zeus. After what you've been through, you deserve it. As you've seen in the programme, many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life, but that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them, and there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. Marley, Marley, hello. Boy, what's this? Good boy. Come on. 
This is Marley. He's a one-year-old crossbreed. He's been here at Blackberry Farm for nearly nine months now, and we can't understand why he hasn't found a new home. Come on, Marley. Yeah, good boy. Three words I'd use to describe Marley are friendly, lovable, and excitable. Marley would need quite a bit of training because he's only a year old. With children over the age of 10, four. Good boy, another one. Good lad. Marley's very friendly. His favourite thing in the world is either running around with a tennis ball, going crazy around the field, or sitting on your lap and trying to be a lap dog. Just like he is now. <laughs> Good boy. I'd definitely be sad to see him go. He is definitely one of my favourites here but I'm really hoping he does find a new home soon. Good boy. So, if you're looking for a four-legged best friend in your life, remember to make your local rescue centre your first stop, where you'll find plenty of deserving candidates desperate to brighten up your home. Next time on The Dog Rescuers. Inspector Kira Benham fights to give five undernourished and flea-ridden dogs a new life. I'm going to have to get police down here and I'm going to have to remove the dogs. The time's run out, guys. The time's run out. An abandoned staffy left tied to a railing, Inspector Anthony Joins comes to the rescue. Do you know who this is? Oh, oh. He's nice, isn't he? Yeah, he's lovely. And we meet Guinness, the cheeky spaniel who kept his high spirits despite a terrible neck wound. Given the degree of infection and the proximity of the wound to major structures, definitely could have been fatal. 